There's a bucket list cruise opportunity on the horizon, and once daily housekeeping seems to be wreaking havoc for one major cruise line. All that and more coming up now. I'm Adrian, the Cruise and Travel Guy. I produce cruise-related content every week, so please make sure you hit that subscribe button. Royal Caribbean has announced that as of March 31st, its entire fleet of ships now offers the high-speed, low-latency satellite internet called Starlink. The upgraded service is available to everyone who purchases the Voom, Surf and Stream option and promises speeds capable of supporting live streaming on social media platforms. Starlink has, pardon the pun, made waves in the cruise industry, with the service being adopted by most major cruise lines around the world. As far as I know, there are still gaps in the service, with particular parts of the world's oceans not experiencing particularly high speeds. But as more and more cruise lines continue to take on the technology, I expect this will change. Disney Cruise Line will be making its highly anticipated Australian debut later this year. But now the cruise line has committed to basing its largest ship in history in our neighborhood. Well, relatively speaking. Earlier this year, Disney acquired the unfinished Global Dream. When she launches the circa 200,000 gross ton, 342 meter long vessel will become the largest in the Disney fleet by a considerable margin. Based on a memorandum of understanding between Disney Cruise Line and the Singapore Tourism Board, the giant ship will actually be home ported in Singapore starting in 2025 for at least five years. That means that for the majority of Australians and New Zealanders, the newest at sea Disney experience will be only a single flight away. If you want to tick more than one travel experience from your bucket list at the same time, then this next cruise might be for you. Departing Los Angeles on April 5th, 2024, Emerald Princess will embark on a 15 night ocean to ocean cruise, taking its passengers from the Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean via the famous Panama Canal. That would tick one item off my bucket list at least, but there's a second. On April 8th, Emerald Princess will be positioned near Mexico, where she will be in a prime vantage spot to view the full solar eclipse. Passengers will be invited onto the upper decks and provided with special glasses, allowing them to enjoy the 4 minute and 28 second cosmic event. Grand Princess and Majestic Princess have both concluded their Australian summer seasons, with the ships each embarking on their Trans-Pacific repositioning voyages to North America within the past week. It marks three years since the last Australian summer cruise season ended rather abruptly, and barely one year since the local ban on cruise ships came to an end. Princess Cruises has announced a new partnership with coffee supplier Lavazza. The partnership will extend to all of the line ships during the Northern Hemisphere spring, and will hopefully result in a much needed improvement in the quality of coffee served on board. Cementing the new business relationship, there will be a range of coffee-inspired dishes developed, plus on board you'll find educational sessions, tastings, food pairings and more. It seems NCL passengers and crew are pushing back against the cruise line's revised stateroom cleaning policy. Rolled out at the beginning of the year, the new policy saw daily housekeeping reduced to once daily for all cabin categories except suites. In making the change, stateroom stewards and junior stateroom stewards all lost their titles, replaced instead with the all-encompassing stateroom attendant name. According to reports on the Crew Center website, this change resulted in a pay increase for those previously recognized as junior stewards, but a pay decrease for more senior stewards. Additionally, one crew member noted that where they previously cleaned staterooms for 30 to 35 guests per section, that number has now jumped to 52, with a reduction in the quality of cleaning. The pushback is apparently being met with equal resistance from management, with supervisors allegedly telling unhappy crew that there's really no point in jumping ship from NCL because other major cruise lines are doing much the same thing. This is definitely an intriguing topic and I'll keep an eye out for any updates. Well, that's it for this week's cruise news update. Wherever you are, thank you very much for watching. If you are celebrating Easter this weekend, have a very happy one. If you would like to book a cruise, you can head to my website, thecruiseandtravelguy.com.au, and you can also give me a follow on Facebook and Instagram at the Cruise and Travel Guy. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. The upgraded service is available to everyone who purchases.
The upgraded service is available to anyone that purchases the ver- If you want to tick more than one travel-based bucket list, as well as educational sessions, tastings, and testings uh, as well.